I got a bit of a disclaimer before I start. You can take me out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of me. So this story could have been anything. From a shack to a prison cell. But this story is from a shack to a president. Because today is about being bold. Today is about owning your story. Today is about changing the narrative. Today is about telling the story how you want it to be told. Today is about looking at your situation and thinking, this is not so bad. I can do something great regardless of where I come from. Today is about being unapologetic about where you come from. I, from a shack, I emerged. So I lived in a shack, and there are a lot of amazing things that happen in a shack. One of which is seeing women take anything around them. It could be metal, it could be boxes, it could be plastics, and turning that into a home, an institution that teaches you that Ubuntu is not just the word you throw around. Ubuntu is a way of life. Ubuntu is something that we embrace. It's something that we are unapologetic about. One day, you have to drop off cooking oil next door, and the next, they need to donate clothes from this house to this house so you can go to matric dance. Living in a shack means you live in a community where everyone suffers the same, so everyone loves and embraces each other the same. My grandmother's shack was something Amazing, something different. So Davidson is the only township in South Africa out of two townships, there's Davidson and, Fos uh, and Soweto, where you find golf courses. And my grandmother's shack was right around the golf course, meaning that my grandmother's shack was in a golf estate. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> so I was very privileged, guys. I was very privileged. So it depends how you look at things. So I know the hardships of living in a shack, but also, guys, there's beauty. What do you know about, you know, throwing a stone on top of your girlfriend's roof so that she can know that you're in the vicinity? <laughs> what do you know about taking a steel iron, ironing your clothes, and next thing, you toast your bread? What do you know about sharing everything, including a bed amongst five other people? Whether their feet smell, or whether they've bathed or not, doesn't matter, you're all in this institution. What do you know about fetching water five kilometers away and coming back to serve the whole family? What do you know about being in a township? What do you know about being a township boy, a kasi boy, in fact, a shack ambassador? So my story started, well, in education, rather. My story started in grade 11. And my teacher said, hey, you won't be allowed to come back into this class unless you have your three accounting textbooks. I looked at my life and I thought, we don't have electricity at home. We don't have money for food. Let alone afford three accounting textbooks. So I ran a little business, I saw sweets, and I said, I won't go back to his class. But in fact, I'll do balance sheets and generals and CPJ, CRJ of my own business. So for a whole year, I never entertained him, but my business was thriving. <laughs> so fast forward, I'm in matric, I'm going to varsity. Then I realized that like, my story is not that of an individual, but my story is of everyone who's been in the same situation as I am. A lot of people. A lot of people till today don't have access to education because textbooks are still expensive. In fact, in South Africa, there's no reading culture because books are expensive. You buy a book for 300 rand and some family members can get groceries for 300 rand for a month. So I said to myself, let's start an institution, let's start an initiative. The Daveson Book Club was started together with like pioneers, young people who are ready to take on the world, change the narrative, change the story. And as young people, we were all under 25 at the time. We said, we want to change the education system to suit us. 
We want to make the necessary measures so that when someone comes from a shack, he doesn't see our issue as being underdeveloped and disempowered. But they are able to tap into these things of education so they can empower themselves. So what did we do? We established libraries. We established book clubs. And today, we have trained people. 500 people are trained through us. 180 people are employed through us. So really, we've seen people go from not being able to read to be able to get higher education and training for free, to becoming, thank you, to becoming breadwinners. And do you know what that does to a society? They then start to appreciate education. And that's the legacy that we want to do. That's the legacy that we want to build. That's the country and the continent that we're looking at and we want to step right into it. So the Daveton Book Club was born. And there's a lot of things that we do that are exciting that we do for the communities. And today, you know, I'm happy to see, you know, young black people, poor, privileged, coming to one space and talking one language. And that can only be achieved through education. Allow me to quote myself. <laughs> Hey guys, <laughs> hey guys, today is about me, sorry. <laughs> Education is the only remedy that can empower people through generational curses of unemployment, poverty, and education. So education still plays a vital role in our communities. And everyone might say, why don't you go digital? Why don't you, you start injecting books into your tablets, their phones? I talk for communities that don't even have cell phones, don't even have libraries. So please go elsewhere and talk your elitist language with your elitist friends. I'm talking about the majority. Do you know that the people that I represent come from informal settlements where, especially in the Kuruleni, you find that there are nine towns, nine townships, and over 110 informal settlements. And it said that one in three black people have either, have either lived in a shack or living in a shack or, since the economy is not so great, everyone's going to downgrade and live in a shack. <laughs> so think about those stats. The majority of our people are still poor. And also, I'm part of an initiative. It's called the Black Pen University Initiative. What we're trying to do is to establish a university in Ekuruleni. We've already passed the feasibility stage. So what that says is that, you know, a lot of people, when they, when they get out of matric, they go elsewhere to find educational means, like tertiary education. So they end up moving to Cape Town, Joburg, or Twane, or elsewhere. They meet a girl, they get babies there, they marry, and then they end up contributing to that economy. But what happens to Ekuruleni? A lot of our people, till today, are unskilled laborers because there's no higher education that caters to their needs. So the education that we are trying to do, and also the university that we're trying to build, will talk right through that. And you'll see, in the next 20 years, when we've seen a lot of people graduate through our university, you'll see how the economy will grow. You'll see how universities have impacted the communities. You'll see the morale grow. You'll see smarter people. you see a lot of things that are amazing that will be happening in Ekuruleni. Mark my words. This is a story of a young Mac, black man from Davidson, 1520 Vuta, and I have to whistle. <laughs> <laughs> My story is not of a special young folk. I'm just like you. In fact, my wounds, my pains, made me realize that my problems afforded a solution. So stop, maybe, maybe, stop praying to God and asking him to take you away from your problems. Maybe you need to thank God for allowing you to be in that position at that time because you are the solution that we need. So, again, disclaimer, you can take me out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so next time we meet, You'll be seeing my face on a ballot paper, and you'll be voting for me as president. <laughs> but for now, ladies and gentlemen, with what we're seeing in South Africa, I'm busy.
capacitating myself, I'm learning. And I'm also inducing myself in what's happening in South Africa, what South Africa needs. So I'm preparing myself, and I'd like you to follow me through my whole journey. I'm very thankful for everything that has happened in my life, and I'm very thankful for the achievements that I've got. And now coming from the township, you never know how to leave a stage. Do I do this? Do I pray? Do I dab? I don't know. But what I'll say is, I'm signing out. <laughs>